Hello everyone. Another modulation which is used is pulse position modulation, PP, a variable pulse position modulation. So, this is also a part of OWC standard. This is part of OWC standard. So, when you are using a light as communication, then also you need to, you should be able to dim the light and even then the communication to, should happen. So, this kind of uh, modulation scheme is is for both which can have for both communication and it can meet some dimming requirement also because the LEDs may not be on all the time so sometimes you'll have to dim it so we need to understand or we need to have a uh, modulation scheme which can support dimming so so standards have uh, identified this and they have uh, recommended a uh, modulation scheme which is good both for communication as well as it should uh, as far as, as as well as dimming and under dimming conditions your communication should not go your sh communication should be maintained now we need to understand what is the minimum dimming you can have to get good performance. So, this is what we will understand uh, in this uh, part of the lecture. Uh, so, we will try to do analysis for uh, VPPM. So, first let us understand uh, variable pulse position modulation. So, for example, so this is actually combination of PPM and pulse position modulation and pulse width modulation. which will meet both dimming criteria as well as communication criteria. So, so I, let me draw a one VPPM pulse to make it more clear. So, suppose I have 010, 0, 1, 0, this is 0, 1, And this is say TS, this is 2TS and say this is 3TS and this is 4TS. And for 0, let me have a pulse which is say cover 75 percent of the time slot and 25 percent is left vacant. So, this is will be taken as 0 and this is actually 75 percent dimming. I mean your light is down by 25 percent, 75 percent there is elimination there. So this is what it means and whenever 1 is there, you do not start from the beginning of TS. It will be starting because it is also based on pulse position to know for the communication. So, this is for the communication requirement. This is communication requirement and this is the dimming requirement. So, in order to meet both, we need to combine these two modulation schemes. So, for, uh, for one, it will be like this. This is 75 percent area which is you know it is 1 and 25 percent it is 0. Then again you have 0. So, the pulse will start from this point itself and it will end somewhere here. And uh, then you have 1. So, 1 for 1 again it will start from here and it will be 0 here. So, this is 0 1, this is uh, 0 and this is 1. So, this is 75 percent. Similarly, you can draw for 50 percent. So, it will be half half and you can draw for 10 percent. So, we will see uh, when we analyze uh, if, the, if the dimming is 10 percent, what is the performance of the system and if the dimming is say 90 percent, then what is the performance of the system. 
So this is uh, a variable pulse modulation, position modulation. Now let me draw a diagram of the VPPM. So let me erase this and then So let us let us draw the diagram of VPPM. So this is your input. Uh, this is B, which either zero or one, and uh, this is some binary data, and this is some uh, VPPM, and the output signal is X by T. And then this LED is modulated. There is a LED which is modulated by this signal. This is a LED. And the output of this is a XT, capital XT. And then you have the channel, optical wireless channel, optical wireless communication channel. And this has impulse response as S0T. And then this is the additive white Gaussian noise which gets added. And let me write this as N0T. So the signal out here is, uh, is XT convolved. with a 0 t plus the noise is added. So this is a signal at this point. And then you have the photodiode at the receiver. And then what you get is RT, receive signal, which will be responsivity into YT. So this I can write as YT. And on the receiver side, once you have got a uh, received signal RT, then it goes to So this I'll explain what is this Q0T, this is Q0T, this is Q1T and then you integrate from 0 to T, it is rather TD, we will also see the TD is actually the duration of the pulse plus the guard band, so TD, DT. And similarly, you have dt, dt, and then you get basically two inputs, uh, outputs, R0, R1, and then there is a decision circuit here, which will decide whether it was, uh, B0 was transmitted or or, or one was transmitted. So this is the decision circuit. So this was B here and this will be B estimate. So we will discuss more about the receiver part a little later but just to recap this, uh, there is an input here which is 0, 1. Then you have the VPPM as I explained earlier. The output is XT and then there is a LED which gets the XT modulates the LED. We get capital XT and then it this is optical power. It goes through a optical channel which is characterized by impulse response as 0T. The noise is N0T. So the total signal will be XT, capital XT, convolved with S0T 
plus n0 t. So, that is the yt. Then it goes to photo detector which has a responsivity of capital of R. So, the received signal RT will be R into yt and then this signal is actually is uh, multiplied by two basis function. These are modified basis function q02 and q1. This is q1. And then integrate from TD and TD consists of the slot duration as well as the guard. Uh, after each uh, pulse, you have some guard time as well. So, TD consists of the pulse duration and the guard and then you get R0 and 1. Then depending upon your decision circuitry, you, uh, you select either R or R1, R0 or R1 or a difference between R0 and R1 can be seen and whether the difference is more than 0 or the difference is less than 0, depending upon uh, that you decide what was your B which was transmitted. So, this is the block diagram of uh, variable pulse position modulation. So, the ST which is actually transmitted is given by root ES, E is the energy in the pulse and D is the dimming range and the D value can change from or is 0 to 100. So, this is this actually characterizes the dimming value. So, ST which is transmitted for B is equal to 0, it will be ES D into 50 and phi, these are the basis function and this basis function depend upon the value of D. So, these are the basis function and which is which depends on the value of D and uh, let me define this basis function phi 0 T is 100 over d t s when 0 uh, it is 0 otherwise and the basis function phi 1 t the other function which characterizes the 1 will be 100 over dts and this is this is between 1 minus d 100 ts less than t ts. So, these are the basis function as you see they are function of d the dimming value which goes from 0 to 100. Uh, so, phi 0 t root 100 by dts in this time frame, this is uh, uh, we also saw the waveform for VPPM uh, where the waveform was you know for 0 it was starting from like this and this was a ts and depending on the value of d. So, I had assumed the case of 75 percent and for 1 it is something like this. So, starts late and ends at 0. So, this is for 0, this is for 1. So, this is how the basis functions are defined for different value of dimming range phi 0 2 and phi 1 t and this is the ST uh, the transmitted uh, signal corresponding to B is equal to 0 and B is equal to 1. So, the total signal XT which is going to be transmitted will can be written as ST minus ITD where TD is the TS plus DG, TG. So, suppose uh, you have this is your TS, this is your TS and then you add some TG here guard band. So, this becomes your total duration. Ts plus Tg. So, this is the transmitted signal and uh, from my earlier diagram as I explained that uh, Yt is equal to 
XT, capital XT, which is coming after the LED, convolved with the 0T impulse response plus the noise. And RT will be whatever YT multiplied by the responsivity of the photodiode, which is R into YT. So that becomes the received signal. And uh, receives YT, we can play, put YT, which is XT into channel impulse response plus noise. So uh, this gives you a DC gain or if you multiply this becomes DC gain as 0 into XT which is nothing but uh, responsivity into XT into convolved with HT and uh, plus NT. So you get two values of R, R that is R0 and R1 uh, which was there in the diagram. So this is this is R0, this is R1. After you know multiplying with the, the modified template of the basis function because this basis function will also be corrupted by the noise and the impulse response which will become Q0T and Q1T instead of Phi0T and Phi1T and then you integrate over the whole full period 0 to TD you get a value of R0 and R1. So there are two possibilities you can subtract these two signals and see whether it is greater than 0 or less than 0 and take a call whether B is equal to 0 was transmitted or B is equal to 1 was transmitted. So R0 is, can be written as this from the from that block diagram 0 to TD that received signal multiplied by the modified or modified basis function. So this is uh, a basis function rather modified basis function after it has after it has passed through the through the channel. So R0 is equal to given by this and similarly R1 is given by 0 to TD, RT, Q1T, DT. So these are the two R0 and R1s we have got. And now let us see, let us draw the basis function and see how this Q0 and Q1 look like. Uh, which is actually if you see QIT is nothing but that original basis function convolved with the impulse response. So this is the modified. So let us see how it look like. So this is my basis function for the say phi 0. This is for phi 0, phi 0 t. And uh, this is here Ts and the energy of this basis function is equal to 1. So this amplitude will be 100 divided by Dts and this, this, this is Dts, d is the dimming range Dts divided by 100. So this is phi 0 to t and if you convolve with Ht it looks something like this because it is a dispersive, dispersive channel. So this will something, this is Ts here, something like this. And then you have, this is the Tg part, guard band which I have kept here, Dg. And the whole uh, total duration is Td. Td is equal to Ts plus Tg. So this is Q0t. This is the template which I have got, which is used here. And similarly, I can write for uh, phi1. So the phi1, this is this is Ts. So phi1 will be this is phi1t. 
and uh, this is same as 100 over dts and uh, this is nothing but 1 minus d by 100 ts and uh, the modified basis function uh, will be so let me first draw this this is ts and this will be tg this will be td so this will be something like this so this is q1t and these points are same 1 minus d by 100 ts and this is the td because i have kept the guard band so even if there is some uh, signal going there so it is in the guard band only it is not affecting the next symbol so this is how r0 and r1 which i have received which will be used for uh, decoding So as I mentioned, this QIT is uh, phi ET, original basis function, convolved with HT. So and let us use maximum likelihood detection scheme uh, for estimating of the transmitted signal that is B estimate, the maximum value of RJ where J is equal to 0 and 1. So let us now do the performance analysis for such a system how the performance varies with respect to the dimming range. So these basis functions, they are all unit energy that is 0 to Ts, phi i squared t dt is equal to 1. Similarly, the modified template or modified basis function is also the energy unit energy remains the same. And the RT is given by uh, gamma. So, I have uh, combined the, the S0, the, the, the gain and the responsivity into a single factor gamma. So, my RT which is received is gamma root ES d by 50 Q0 t plus nt and this actually has come from R0 was equal to gamma Yes, d over 50 plus n0 and similarly r1 was gamma so this is whole 50 yes d over 50 plus n1 So, RZ, R, R0 is equal to 0 to T dt and this is we have seen earlier. So, if I put the value of RT here, which I had given just now here, RT here, this one, then I get 0 to TD, this gamma which is responsivity and the channel gain. Uh, root ESD by 50, this is Q0 square and this is Q0 T and T. So, the noise also gets uh, modified. So, this becomes the new noise Q uh, integrate, integration from 0 to TD Q0 T into NT. And this can be written as N naught because this energy is 1, this is unit energy basis function. So, this energy, this is 1 when you integrate from 0 to Td and this is the new energy which the new noise I have got and 0. So, this expression for R0 becomes gamma root ESD divided by 50 plus and naught. Similarly, I can calculate the value of R1, the other received signal which is multiplied by uh, another basis function which is uh, uh, Q1t. So, this becomes Rt q1t and uh, integrated from 0 to t. So, this will give you putting the value of rt here. So, you get uh, uh, this is n1 here and 
this I call this as alpha. So my alpha, I have introduced one term which is alpha and this alpha is nothing but 0 to Td which is a correlation factor uh, q0t, q1t, dt. So this is the correlation factor, this is an important factor that we will understand the implication of this little later. So, so this becomes gamma root ESD by 50 into alpha, alpha is a correlation factor. So now let us try to calculate uh, what is expected value of these n0, n1, which I have got. So, so putting the value of n0, which is nt uh, q1t dt integrate, integrated over 0 to td and similarly n1 and I am trying to calculate the expected value of this. So expected operator is here. So this will give me, uh, because the expected value of e n square n t is n 0 by 2 which will come out and then you are left with 0 root t d q 0 t into q 1 which is nothing but alpha, this is alpha. So this whole thing becomes n 0 alpha by 2. So this is n 0 alpha, n 0 by 2 into alpha. So this is the expected value of 2 noise. Now, now as I mentioned earlier, let us define a new random variable z which is actually a difference between R0 and R1, the two received vectors. Then the expected value of z when b, will, b is equal to 0 was transmitted, assuming b is equal to 0 is transmitted, will be expected value of R0 minus expected value of R1. And if I put expected value of R0 from my earlier expression, and expected an R1 from the earlier expression, then I get gamma into ES, D is the dimming divided by 50, 1 minus alpha. So this is when B is equal to 0 was transmitted. So this is the expected value of Z when Z is defined at R0 minus R1. Also try to calculate the variance of this Z. So variance of this Z will be uh, you, you, one knows about R0 and R1 is known. So basically you have to take R0 minus R1 whole square, put the value of R0 here and R1 here, square it and then take the expected value. So there will be some constant value which for which the expectation operator does not mean anything. So you will be left with expected value of N0 minus N1 whole square and ex, uh, expect and for calculating this, uh, basically you have to expand this. So this will be n0 square plus n1 square minus n0 n1. And expected value, this expected value can go inside. So this will give you expected n0 square is n0 by 2. This will give you also n0 by 2. And this we have calculated just now, which is 2 into n0 2 by alpha, which is calculated here. So this is n0 by 2 alpha. So what we get is n0 minus n0 alpha, which is nothing but n0 into 1 minus alpha. So now I am in a position to find out the probability of error when b is equal to 0 was transmitted. So prob b is equal to 0 will be when the z, that is a difference between the r1 and r2, that is less than 0, is less than 0. the z was r1 minus r2. So either z can be greater than 0 or z will be less than 0, right. So if you transmit for example b is equal to for example 0, so maybe it will correspond to and if z is uh, less than 0, if suppose you transmit b is equal to 0 and z is less than 0, then there is an error. Right. And if you transmit b is equal to 1 and z is greater than 0, there is an error. So this is how you will calculate both these errors. So probability of error, z less than 0 when b is equal to 0 was transmitted. This will be given by minus infinity to 0 pz 
and we already have calculated the mean and the variance of z, the difference r1 minus r2. So, this will give me the value of probability of error and this can be written because I know the value of mean and I know the value of uh, uh, variance, sorry mean is somewhere here and this is the variance part, this is the variance part. So, this is Gaussian uh, distribution function. So, this is the value of uh, probability of error when b is equal to when b is equal to 0 was transmitted and similarly you can calculate I mean this can be converted into q function this uh, we have done when we were doing on off keying how to convert uh, this Gaussian into error complementary function or q function. So, this can be converted into error complementary function which is given by this and similarly for p probability of error when b is equal to 1 was transmitted, we can on the same uh, use following this doing the same analysis, we can find out this probability which will be actually same as this and you add this total probability, the so total probability and assuming that uh, number of 1s and zeros that is b is equal to 0 or 1 they are same under that condition you can sum it and the total probability error will be given by this. So, as you see this probability of error actually depends on alpha which is the correlation factor and which actually depends on the noise whether 0 was suffered with noise or 1 suffered with more noise. So, this alpha the, the total probability of error is actually function of alpha and uh, if I plot this probability of error for example, this is probability of error and I take this SNR here, I mean this ES by N naught is some sort of SNR. So, so if I take SNR and if I plot for different values of D, so this is, will be D is equal to 50 percent and this will be d is equal to 10 percent and this will be d is equal to 70 percent. So, actually for d is equal to 50 percent when the dimming is 50 percent, it gives you best result as compared to d value which is more than 50 percent or less than 50 percent because if it is less than 50 percent the received signal is very very low because the dimming is high. So, you hardly receive anything after the attenuation. So, the performance goes down and on the other side if the D is 70, 70 percent or 75 percent then the this value of alpha actually increases. So, because of this uh, correlation factor there is again a degradation. So, the degradation happens on both sides of uh, 50 percent and 50 percent gives you the maximum on one side is the amplitude other is on the other side it is the correlation factor. So, this is how one can see you know suppose your requirement is 10 to the minus 3 then these are the different SNRs which are required for 10 to the minus 3 for if you are for different dimming ranges. So, this is uh, a VPPM that is variable pulse position modulation which is actually a part of uh, standard for optical wireless communication systems which will support both communication as well as dimming. So, we will stop at this point for baseband modulation techniques and uh, uh, next we will go to multi multi carrier modulation techniques which are called which is called as MCM and we will also study uh, other forms of MCM, MCM like OFDM, optical, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, etc. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.